All right, this is our overview for April 13th through the 17th of what we're gonna be doing for second grade. This is things, um, these are things that you guys are used to seeing. This is our topic for the week. We're still talking about wind and water, changing the earth and how we react to changes in nature. Here's our spelling words, high frequency words. Again, when I printed this, I'm so sorry. They got a little squished, covered and sense at the top too. There, uh, we're gonna be working on comparatives. Comparatives kind of explain to us like big, bigger, biggest. So we're gonna be looking at the suffixes of ER and EST and then contractions. When you have two words that are slammed together and then we take out a couple letters and put in an apostrophe. Um, so we're gonna take a look at the apostrophe LL, apostrophe VE and apostrophe M words. And you can go ahead and review your high frequency words there at the, the bottom. Now these are all things that you guys can work on at home. These are all of your spelling words. Uh, you guys are used to doing your reading comprehension. So you'll go through and read the story and answer the questions. You'll go through and do your spelling words as many times as you can do on each line. And then two sentences using some of the spelling words above. You're gonna do your word boxes. You guys are all experts at this your roll and read, and you can read this to a sibling, a stuffed animal, a parent, a grandparent, somebody who is in your home. You can go through and read all of these. If you don't have a dice, you can just ask them to pick a number between one and six and cross them out as you've done it. So practicing your reading skills out loud. Uh, you're gonna write your spelling words three times. This is the spelling word unscramble sheet that you guys are all experts at as well. Here's the writing the sentences for each spelling word. Remember, at least seven words in each sentence. I'm looking for capital letters at the beginning and punctuation at the end. And then putting the words in ABC order. Now, this is going to be a little bit tricky because some of the words are the same letters at the beginning, like newer and newest. You've got N-E-W, N-E-W, N-E-W-E, N-E-W-E. And then you have to look at the next letter, the fifth letter. We've got R and S. You go down to the bottom, take a look. You've got R and S, which one comes first? R, so we know that newer is gonna come before new west. So be sure to take a look at that. So you might have to cross out a bunch of letters till you find the first one that's not the same. So this is all independent work that you guys will do at your house during the week. Let's take a look at some of the extra work that you will also have. We're gonna be writing about the Easter Bunny, and I'll do that in a separate YouTube lesson, but you can do it on your own. You're gonna write a story about the year the Easter Bunny left you a magical egg in your basket. What did the egg look like? How was it magical? And you're gonna use lots of details to describe actions, thoughts, and feelings. And you get to color a picture. We have our Scholastic News. Again, you guys will log on the website um, and do your Scholastic News reading. You can do your quiz at the end and the supplemental worksheets. And again, I can uh, do a separate video for that as well. We're gonna be continuing on with topic 11, math, just more subtraction strategies. We're gonna be doing uh, lessons 11.5 through 11.7. Again, those will be separate YouTube video links. And then these worksheets, I figured we could go ahead and take a look at now. These are simple and compound sentences. So a compound sentence is made of two or more simple sentences. Sentences are joined by a comma and a linking word, such as and, but, or, or. So a simple sentence would be, it is cool, it will be warm later. A compound sentence connects the two simple sentences and makes them more exciting. Just like I have you all try to do sentences that are like seven words long. Um, it, it makes the, the reading a lot more exciting when you've got more details. So this is combining the two sentences with one of these connecting words, and, but, or are. So it is cool now, but it will be warm later. So we're gonna be combining the two simple sentences to make a compound sentence. Add a comma first, and then a linking word. I'm gonna grab my, my magnets here and put these up. So our first one, so we want to make sure we add a comma and then our linking words, and these are our linking words up here. It rained last night. The sky is clear tonight. So we can take a look at the three and see which one makes the most sense. 
it rained last night and the sky is clear tonight. Eh, kind of works. It rained last night, but the sky is clear tonight. That one makes great sense. But let's check our last one. It rained last night or the sky is clear tonight. That doesn't work. So we're going to do but. So it rained last night, comma, but, and then this becomes a lowercase t. The sky is clear tonight. And I'm going to have you guys rewrite the sentence on the line. Okay? We see many stars. The moon is shining brightly. So let's take a look. We see many stars and the moon is shining brightly. That works. We see many stars, but the moon is shining brightly. Eh, possibly. We see many stars or the moon is shining brightly. So we're going to figure out which word we need to do to put together our compound sentence. So the one that I think works the best is and. You could use but if you wanted to, but and is going to work the best here. We see many stars, comma, and the moon is shining brightly. So we need our second sentence to have a lowercase at the beginning. So again, you'll go through and copy it there on the, cent um, on the line. Okay, number three, we can gaze at the stars. We can watch TV. So let's see our choices. We can gaze at the stars and we can watch TV. Eh, that might be kind of hard to do. We can gaze at the stars, but we can watch TV. Well, let's take a look at our last one. We can gaze at the stars or we can watch TV. So these are kind of two choices. So we're gonna go with R. We can gaze at the stars, comma, or lowercase w, we can watch TV. Okay, number four. You can wear a sweater. You can put on a coat, okay? So let's take a look. You can wear a sweater and you can put on a coat. That works. You can wear a sweater, but you can put on a coat. Eh, kind of. You can wear a sweater or you can put on a coat. You know what, either one of those, and, or, the word or would work there. So I'll let you guys decide what you wanna do. So you can choose and or or, connect the, the sentences together and make sure to make that a lower case as you connect it. Okay, number five. Hank might stay up, he might go to bed, okay? Hank might stay up and he might go to bed. Well, that doesn't make sense. He's either gonna stay up or he's gonna go to bed. Hank might stay up, but he might go to bed. That works. Or Hank might stay up or he might go to bed. So we actually have two that can work there. So we can use but or or as our connecting words. So remember to put your comma in and make that one lowercase there. So hopefully that is helpful for simple and compound sentences. Let's take a look at our second worksheet on simple and compound sentences. Okay, a sentence is a group of words that tell a complete thought. To form a compound sentence, join two or more simple sentences with a comma and a linking word, such as and, but, or for. So again, our simple sentences are I like music, three words. I like to read, four words. But take a look at this. I like music and I like to read. We combine it and we make it a more exciting sentence. Okay, but remember we've got to put our comma in where the period was at a linking word, okay? So we're gonna underline both simple sentences that form the compound sentence and circle the word that joins them. So we're gonna circle the word that joins and we're gonna underline both the simple sentences. Okay, Ryan lost his library book is a simple sentence. Jose found it is a simple sentence. The word that joins them is and. Again, we're looking for these three words up here. In fact, we could go ahead first and that will let us know where our simple sentences are. We're looking for and, but, or are. So we've got the word but right here. So Kayla likes nonfiction is a simple sentence. Nathan likes folk tales is another simple sentence. Okay. Number three, I will meet you at the library or, so this right here is our connecting word. So we know what's before and what's after are gonna be the two simple sentences. I will meet you at the library, simple sentence. I will see you later, simple sentence. Combine the two simple sentences to make a compound sentence. Add a comma and a linking word and write the compound sentence on the line. I'm gonna have you guys do that on your own. I'm gonna go through and just show you the little sample of how you would do that. 
Julie shouted hello, so we know we need a comma there. And I answered, but I answered, or I answered. I think and is gonna work the best there. So let's put and I answered, okay? And then you would write that on your, your sentence line. We got on our bikes, comma, and we rode to the store, but we rode to the store, or, or we rode to the store. Well, and is gonna work the best there also. And then this is gonna to need to become a lowercase w because it's not the beginning of a new sentence anymore, so we don't need a capital letter there. Okay, number six. She got some juice. I know I'm gonna need a comma there. Blank, I brought crackers. She got some juice and I bought crackers. She got some juice, but I bought crackers. She got some juice or I bought crackers. So she got some juice. You could use and or but would work there. And or but would both be connecting words that would work there. So hopefully that's easy for the simple and compound sentences. Okay, these are our comparatives. These are our big, bigger, biggest. And they've got the, um, the suffixes at the end of ER and EST. So we've got our word boxes here. So spelling words that compare two things and spelling words that compare more than two things, okay? So things that are more than two things um, is going to be ending with an E-S-T, okay? Two things, you've got big or bigger, but words that compare more than two things would be like big, bigger, biggest, bigger, biggest, that sort of thing. So these are gonna be all the E-R, these are gonna be all the E-S-T endings. And then at the bottom it says circle the two spelling words that are antonyms of each other. Antonym means opposites, okay? So those are the ones that are the opposites of each other. And let's go to our last comparative worksheet here. And we're just gonna put in the words that make the most sense uh, to complete the sentence, okay? So we've got our two words here. We've got colder and coldest. It is colder in January than in June or it is coldest in January than in June. Now we're comparing two things. So we know we're gonna need the ER. We don't, if it's more than two things, we would use the EST, okay? Is January the colder month of the year or the coldest month of the year? Well, we're talking about all the months of the year. There's 12 months of the year, that's more than two. So we know that's gonna be coldest, okay? Gina has the blank bike of all. Well, Gina has the faster bike of all. Well, this is all the bikes ever. So this is gonna be more than two bikes. So we know it's gonna be fastest. So I know you guys can work on the rest of that by yourself. It should be pretty easy. Just read it out loud and if it makes sense, it's most likely right and you can have your parents check it too. All right, great job.